Hi, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Today we're going to take a look on how we can bring multiple Excel files into Power BI. These Excel files can be saved in your local machine, uh, like you can see on the right hand side. This is a folder on my desktop and here I have three sample data Excel files. They can also be saved in the cloud. In my case, you can see it here on the left hand side. I have a demo library in my SharePoint site and there I have saved these same three Excel files. So let's see how we can bring this data, once from the folder and once from the SharePoint site library. After bringing the data into Power BI, the process on transforming and then preparing the data for the visualizations is the same. It doesn't matter if it's coming from the folder on your desktop machine or from a cloud provider like SharePoint, Microsoft. But enough with the theory, let's take a look how we can do that in practice. But first, make sure that you give it a thumbs up if you like the video and that you subscribe to the channel. Have fun. Before starting the connection with the data source, let's take a look how our data is built so that we can have a better understanding. So you need to keep in mind that these different Excel files are completely the same in terms of structure, of data structure of the columns and of the type of data that they contain. But the only difference is that they are from different times. So we have here some sample data from August, from July and from June. So if we take a look here in the August data, we will see that we have a table which contains, uh, which is called sales orders and contains a column called order date, region, rep, uh, which is the representative item, units, unit cost, and the total. So what we need is a column in Power BI which allows us to filter based on that month so that we can say, okay, show me the sample data or the sales orders from August, from July, or from June. So to not have to do that in the Excel files, because then you will have to do it for each and every Excel file that you create, we can achieve this in Power BI. So, because when we connect to this folder, we can use the name of the file to extract the month and then keep that as a filter. And then when we merge all these Excel files together, we will be able to filter based on that column. So now let's see how we can connect the data into our Power BI desktop application. To do that, we need to click here on the get data uh, section of our ribbon. And if we click more, we can see that we have a little bit more options to connect to data. And on the right hand side, you can see that we can select a single Excel workbook, or we can select a folder or a SharePoint folder. The two scenarios that I talked about in the beginning of this video were once about, were once for the SharePoint folder and once for the local folder. It says also in the description, import metadata and links about files in a folder. So let's try this first because it's a bit easier. If I select that and click connect, this will allow me to select the folder path. The folder path can be selected by clicking the browse button. This will then start this uh, browser, which is like a file explorer in our desktop machine and will allow me to select the data that I need to use in my Power BI desktop. My folder is saved in desktop. So I'm going to scroll down and search for my folder now. And that one is called Office Order Data. By selecting the folder, I can then click OK. And that will place the path of the folder into this field. Then I can click OK. And I will be prompted with the option to transform the data. And here are all my sample data. We also see here that we have another file called desktop.ini. I don't know what that means. If you know, please let me know in the comments. I hope it's nothing bad. But if you can see in my folder, we don't have that there. Now, maybe it's something internal for the folders or for the structure. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know. So what we're going to do now, instead of saying combine, because we can directly say combine and load in the model or combine and transform the data, we can say just load or we can say transform data or cancel. I'm going to say transform data because I want to go that step by step with you. This will launch the Power Query. And now we can see on the left hand side one query called Office Order Data. And then in the tables or in the query, we can see the tables that are hidden here as binary values. And here we have the name of those Excel files 
the extensions, data, uh, the date access on that file, and so on and so forth, and some attributes, the folder path, and information that you may or may not need. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to first filter this desktop E out because, as I said, I don't know what it is and I also don't need it. So I'm going to say here, select all except of that file. So this will give me a clean table with only the data that I need. Next, I'm going to click choose columns because I only want to keep a couple of them, not all of them. What I need is the content so that we can expand it and then get that content of those files, the data, and also the name, because as I said, I want to extract the month from that column so that we can then later on filter based on that month. I'm going to click OK and everything else will disappear except of these two columns. So as you can see, now we have here this clean table of um, data with our three Excel files. What we can do here is two things. First, if we want to merge the data from the multiple Excel files that we have in that folder, we can click this button here, which says combine files. But if you want the data from only one of the Excel files, you can click in this binary value in one of the rows. So what happens is that after clicking, you will see here two rows, one with the sales orders and one which is called table one. Sales orders is the worksheet name. And if we open that in, by clicking in this table value here, we will see that we have the data, but the column headers are in the first row, which means we will then have to bring the first row as column headers. Nothing too difficult. It's just something that you will have to do if you select that row. If we go back and we click in that table from the table one, um, row, we will see that then we select the actual table in that worksheet because the table has been, or because the data has been formatted in a table, we can then directly access that table. And here we can see that the column headers are in their place. You know? So we don't need to promote them as column headers. But since we don't want to do either of these two steps, we want to merge all the data. I'm now going to delete these two steps that I took, that one as well, and I'm going to click these two arrows here. This will now start evaluating the query and then doing some clever stuff in the background to merge that data for me. But first we need to say which files we want to combine. And here we see again that table one and that sales orders. So it has extracted all table one and all sales orders worksheets from all those files. And now it's suggesting me to combine them or to select which one I want to combine. Since I already want the headers to be promoted, so in the, in the column headers, I'm going to select the table one. And as you can see that this is the data that I have. I'm going to select OK. The query will evaluate and then I will be able to see here all my data from all my uh, Excel worksheets into one query. So which means that we now have all the data that we need, but we are missing that column that I mentioned. No? So somehow we need to distinguish which data comes from which month. Sure, we can use this order date, but imagine you don't have this order date in your in your Excel books, no? in your worksheets you only have some text data and some values and so on and so forth. So you want to be able to distinguish between those Excel files. And how we can do that is by looking on the right hand side of our, um, of our Power Query. We see here that some steps have been applied for us when we merge and when we transform that data no, from, from those three Excel files. If we go back a couple of steps, we have here this expanded table column, removed other columns, and so on and so forth. And this removed other columns, one, um, because we did it here uh, earlier in the video, um, is the one that we need to customize. And that we can do by clicking on this gear icon on the right hand side. And here we can see that the automated steps that were taken for us um, removed that name uh, column from the query. So, so it left us only with this transform file. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select that name column and I'm going to jump 
back to my last step, which is this change type here. And we can see that the first column now is not the order date anymore, but this name column. And this name column is the name of my Excel file. And as you can see, if I select the uh, drop down here for the filtering option, we can see that we have these three, um, three data names, no? which are here in distinct view. So what we want to do here is that we want to extract this month name from this um, from this name, no? from the sample data space dash space august.xlsx. So there is many ways how you can do that. But the easiest way, in my opinion, is to add a column from examples which means that uh, first of all, we need to select this column. And here you can select if you want to uh, create a new column from examples coming from all the columns or from your selection. We only want to see that selection, which is our name column. That's why I'm gonna say from selection. And now on the far right side of my Power Query, a new column is uh, being created. And that will be called um, month. So what we can do now is we can start typing which data we want to be shown in this column from this name column. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write August. I'm going to click enter. And this will now create a conditional column in the background by using something that yeah, it feels like copiled a little bit, something like AI powered, uh, some smart technology behind it. Uh, to extract that a month name from this text here, from this string. And if we scroll down, we can see that it does it very well. Here, starting from row 43, it has um, seen that row 44 is now July, and it's only right in July. And the same is doing for June, and so on and so forth. So it works very well, and it's the easiest way to extract that information. So now I'm going to click OK. And that will now create my column. And as you can see, we have it here. In the drop down, we can see only the month names. Um, if I want to have it on the far left side, I can drag and drop it, of course. But if you have many, many columns, um, it's a bit, yeah, it's tiring to do that. So what you can do is you can say right click and then you can say move uh, to the beginning. So now I have it on the far left side in the beginning of my table. And now I can say I don't need this name column anymore because that uh, month name is in my month column. And many people will think, but if you delete it, how does the month column that you created know what the values are? It does because everything is stored in the steps before. No? So everything is uh, happening sequentially. And in the step before, that column was there when we extracted the month. That's why it knows. So you don't need to keep that column anymore. Okay, so now we have all the data placed together from um, multiple Excel files that came from um, a folder in my local device. Let's see how we can do this exact same process, but now coming from SharePoint folders. So I'm going to do all this transformation again because this is one-to-one -one exactly the same. The only difference is how you connect to that SharePoint folder. So I'm going to show you a really quick here. I'm going to say add new source, click more. We are still in Power Query. No, I didn't move back to the model. So I'm going to say here a SharePoint folder, click connect. And what you need is from your SharePoint folder, the root URL. Let's grab that over here, which is until the name of your SharePoint site. Paste that in there, click OK. Two hours later. And as you can see here, we have all those files from our SharePoint site because you cannot just say, OK, grab me the files from that specific folder in my SharePoint, but you just put this SharePoint root URL. And for that reason, it will bring you here all the data or better said, all the files from that SharePoint site. So nonetheless, we can still say here, transform data. And then as we filter that weird file in my folder on my desktop, we can filter here everything else out. So what I want to say here is I want to remove everything which is not my sample data uh, Excel file. But in this case, because I don't know what types of files and how many files are going to come into my SharePoint site, 
different like in that uh, comparison to that folder where I can say, okay, in that folder are only this sample data um, types of files going to land. But in my SharePoint site, it can happen that also other files land there like this one see in the beginning uh, let's, that you can see. So if I would say uh, remove this and only keep these ones, um, the filtering will only grab the information that has this exact name that you can see here. But if the next month comes in, so sample data September, for example, uh, it will be filtered out. For that reason, what I'm going to do is instead of uh, selecting it here manually, I'm going to use its text filters here. And I'm going to say that my data, which is the name that hopefully my file will always have, and then uh, I will check if that is contained into that file name. And by saying here, OK, this will always search for that segment, for that string that I just entered into my file names. So um, what I'm going to do next is similar like before. I'm going to say choose columns and I'm going to remove everything except continent name. I'm not going to continue with the transformation from here on because it's exactly the same. You combine the files and then you clean up and you do everything like we did from that, um, from that uh, local folder. But what I'm going to show you now is if I go to my folder and create a copy, let's say we, we let's imagine that we added a new month, which is um, our, let's rename this our September data, September data um, in the folder. And let's do this also in our SharePoint site library. So here it is our library and here is our folder. I'm going to drag and drop it in there. So now we have that a new month also in our library in SharePoint. And if I go to the one, the query from the folder, from the static folder in our local uh, drive, we can see here we have June, July and August. If I refresh this uh, preview, we are going to see September as well. Now, if I filter it, we have September as well now in the drop down. And let me scroll down. There, there it is. Now, so September now is there. This works perfectly also because we know that in this folder we have only these four files. But let's see how it looks like in our query one, which is the data coming from our SharePoint list. Uh, sorry, SharePoint library. Let's refresh this preview as well. And we should see that the filter option with the contains that we selected works because this is also in the name. And the only thing that will change in this scenario is the month name. So this works perfectly. And yeah, from here on is exactly the same like everything that we did up until now. Yeah, so I think uh, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel to help the, the channel grow. And uh, if you have any questions, as I said, ask me on the comments or on LinkedIn. Try to connect with me um, anytime and I will help as much as I can. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and catch you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.